Hi everyone, welcome back to the second video in our 3D potential field modeling series. Uh, we, once again, we'll be using the UBC Mag 3D and Grav 3D. Today's video, I'll be focusing mainly on magnetics. If you haven't, as of yet, watched the previous video that deals with setting up your observation files, please do so before continuing with this video. Also, before we start, make sure that you have all your executable files in one folder that we'll be using for today, as well as just create a secondary uh, folder that you can call inversion or something like that that you can actually um, find after the inversion models have completed. The algorithm produces a lot of files, so to prevent it messing up your, your executable folder, uh, it's, I suggest creating another folder. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is open our mesh tool here. Yeah, we need to create the mesh that we'll be using in our inversion um, a process today. So we open it up here, uh, it's just the hardware, just press cancel for now because we don't have any mesh or models. Okay, so once you're on this screen, we just click on file and then create mesh. Okay, so the, what it needs is your, your top southwest corner. So by top it means at zero elevation, so your surface, and then southwest corner. So if we look here, just as an example of this magnetic data, it would be this corner here is our top southwest corner. So you have to make sure that your mesh is large enough that it covers the actual observation observational data. Okay, so once you, you know the limits of your data, you can then put in your uh, southwest corner into X, your Y. This is just Z, so if you have topography data, uh, you can put your elevations in this in this cell, yeah? Uh, the, this is cell width, so for inversion, um, for inversion models, you can set up the, the width of each cell within your mesh. This, this plays a large role in how fast your inversion will run. The larger your cells, the quicker to run, but the coarser your model will be. But the smaller the cells, the slower the model will run, and obviously the finer your model will be. This is just the X and Y lengths of your your mesh. So the the basically the le this length, the X length here, and the Y length here. So you want to make sure that you have enough length again to cover cover the whole observation survey area. So for me, I'm just going to leave it as 20 for now, uh, I'll just do 50, 50 just because for the sake of the video, and a thousand, thousand. Okay, and then you can save your mesh, so just save the mesh within that folder that you initially made. I just called mine mesh, but you can name your, your mesh whatever you like, especially if you're changing cell sizes. I'm just going to save it here. So yeah, we have our mesh that we'll be using. You can also have a look at your labels just to double check that everything is within your your survey area. So you can have a look at your X and Y coordinates. If you are now happy with your survey or your, your mesh setup, we can move out of the mesh tool. Now we can actually start running our first inversion. So what we're going to use now is this, this Mag 3D GUI, which if you watched the previous video, I mentioned that you can download it from the, the UBC website's utility page. This will be using for our inversion today. So once you open it, you have two op two fields that you have to fill in. The first is your mesh. This is what we just created. So you, you browse to the mesh um, that you created. And then what I like to do is I like to view the mesh just to make sure that everything is still working properly. Now it needs our observation data. So this is the observation file we made in the previous video. Um, so it's usually dot .mag, but I just left it as dot .text. Again, we can just view data just to make sure everything is there. Okay, we're happy. It's read the file. Okay, so before we start, uh, we, if we go into advanced options, I'm just going to quickly run through a few things. Yeah, I'm not going to get too in-depth with the inversion. Uh, make sure that you are creating a sensitivity file uh, for your initial inversion run. Once the, the files are created, you don't have to create them again. You can run uh, multiple inversions off the same files, as long as the same mesh is being used. And this is where all your inversion parameters are. Uh, the important um, fields here is your low and upper bound. So for magnetic, it's your SI units. Uh, depending on how magnetic uh, your lithology in your area is, you can set up um, the minimum maximum magnetic susceptibility for your model. 
Okay, so we just leave it at that for now. So once you're happy with all those settings, you can click save and run. Now, now this is important, make sure you're actually saving it in this file we created. And I'll show you now why. So I'm going to save it. Okay, so it's creating our sensitivity matrices. And then it, the inversion starts running. Now this is quite a um, coarse mesh, so the inversion is actually running very quickly. Um, so just to show you as we're running, some cool features with the UBC program, you can actually look at how the inversion is, is moving along. For example, yeah, this is our ob observation data, and this is the predicted, so the calculated data from your model for the first iteration. And if we move on to, say, the 15th iteration, we can see that it's starting to calculate something similar to observation data. So you can play around and, and you can also look at the differences uh, between your data, your observed data and your calculated data. Okay, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to stop the inversion here. Um, just for information, this is, you can look at your weighting um, parameters with this weighting button, your sensitivity parameters, and then this eye gives you all your inversion details for each iteration, what the, the target misfit is for your inversion, and then how the iterations have uh, moved along throughout the procedure. Okay, so so once you're done with that, you can close once the inversion is completed, or say the inversion is completed, and then just to show you, this is what I mean, it creates a lot of files. Um, these are your your uh, calculated observations, and this is the susceptibilities of your model. There's also a sensitivity file that you can load into your, um, your mesh tool if you want to look at the sensitivity of the model. So now let's... For the sake of the video, I'm just going to load in inversion that I, I did earlier today. So again, we've, we have a mesh. So you're going to use the mesh that you created for your inversion. Uh, for, for the one I used was a 5 meter mesh. And then the model is then in your inversion file. You then choose the susceptibility for the iteration you, you want to look at. So I'll 21. Now you can open your model. Okay, so this... Now it's opened an inversion model. Just to show you, um, if you add padding cells uh, or, or cells that are, are out of the range of your data, you can actually see them. If you look at your min-max, the so min-max just changes the minimum maximum um, uh, susceptibility shown for the model. So for example, if I do just zero, one, something crazy, you can see yeah, sort of the server area and the, the rest is padding cells. Uh, okay, so just want to change this back. Okay, and then uh, so you can actually see that we don't don't need all these cells. We don't have any sensitivity at the bottom here. So you can press B up here or on your keyboard, and you can start um, cutting the bottom of the the model off. And then, as you can see, you have W stands for west. So if you can move west, and then you just scroll with your mouse wheel. East, again, just scroll with your mouse wheel to where you're happy with, the specifically where you want to zoom into the part of the model you're interested in. South is S on your keyboard, and then North is obviously N. So once you're happy with the area you want to look at uh, um, in your model, with the, the cutting plates, you can actually get rid of all the unnecessary cells by going to Options and Padding Cells and, do, and just click on Cut Planes. Okay, so just to have a better look at what we're seeing here, just change the minimum and maximum. And you can also use the cut off function. So this just allows you to see what's happening in your model. So for example, this, this model is over some dikes in one of my study areas. And as we move along, you can see it's giving the susceptibilities, um, it's showing itself the susceptibilities within the range of the cutoff um, values here. And yeah, so this is our first inversion. Um, you can obviously play around, do finer meshes. This cell, it, this model had a, a cell mesh, a cell width of five meters, so five by five. Uh, also, you can add your labels by clicking labels, so display labels. And then this is the color bar unit, so if you just use SI and then the decimal places. And yes, so this is our first inversion. It's pretty simple, and this is just the basics, but this is just to get you started. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.